YouTube family, click the link and subscribe to our channel as Fabrizio Romano joins for the latest transfer news. Vamos! The end of the transfer window is getting closer and clubs all over Europe are scrambling to either release unnecessary personnel or hoping to complete their squads. Fabrizio Romano joins the show to provide us with all the context. Plus, we answer your questions. Que golazo, a live que golazo begins right now. Hey, everybody, welcome to Kego Lasso, youtube.com forward slash Kego Lasso, Kego Lasso pod on Twitter. 20.1 thousand subscribers, Fabrizio Romano, on our YouTube channel. How good is that? That's great. That's great. Ciao, guys. Super happy for, for this news and ready to enter into the final days of the window. So let's do it. Absolutely, my friend. And Fab, of course, is a major part of this team. Make sure to follow his content on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, CBS Sports every single week. Part of our Serie A team as well and Champions League coming up. Fab, as you mentioned, this window is getting tighter. It's closing. It's closing. But much more business needs to be done. So today, everybody, we're going to focus on a few clubs. We'll answer your questions, of course. But let's get straight into business, Fabrizio Romano. Let's talk about Manchester United. They're playing a very important game against Liverpool today, 19th. They don't have a single point. Eric Ten Hag is struggling a little bit. But Casemiro, you know, saying his goodbyes today to Real Madrid on his way to Manchester United. Hearing Anthony as well, uh, maybe. Give us the lowdown on Manchester United and what's the latest this week for Eric Ten Hag and co. Yes, as you mentioned, Casemiro is, is in. He completed his medical between Saturday and Sunday, and now he's ready to be unveiled as new Manchester United player. And let me say that I think in the media is a bit underrated, maybe because it was not an exciting window for uh, for Manchester United. But the, this signing, this single signing, I think is fantastic. One of the best defensive midfielders in the in the history of the game in the last 20, 30 years. So congrats for this signing because it was not an exciting window, but a top, top signing, Casemiro. Uh, next one, Anthony is the top priority now for Manchester United. Uh, they are trying to understand if Ajax will change their stance or not. They want to keep Anthony. They are trying to keep Anthony. But at the same point, Man United uh, had a bid rejected last week, 80 million euros. The player is trying to force a move because he didn't train with the group on Friday, same on Saturday. And then they decided not to play uh, Anthony on, uh, on Sunday together with the player, of course, because he didn't want to be part of the game with Sparta Rotterdam. And so he didn't even travel with, uh, with the squad uh, to, to Rotterdam. So Anthony, Anthony wants Ajax to negotiate with Manchester United. He hopes there will be a negotiation, there will be a price tag at the end of this of this saga to, to join Manchester United, to rejoin Eric Ten Hag. He really wants Manchester United, but at the moment it's up to Ajax. So Anton is the priority. Cody Gakpo, another negotiation for Manchester United, who have a very good relationship with his agents, same agents as Eric Ten Hag. So completely different price, could be around 45, 50 million. And so May United are busy on many, many things. Uh, new right back depends on one Bissaka if he will leave the club. Will arrive a new second goalkeeper to create some competition uh, with David De Gea. So May United will be pretty busy. Today they're focusing on the game and then tomorrow we will see how they will move on the market. All right. So Manchester United, plenty, plenty. Are they still a little bit interested in Christian Pulisic? Is that cooled off due to Todd Bowley uh, holding off? It was just a request. It was exactly one week ago. They asked Chelsea and intermediaries to understand if they had any chance to negotiate for uh, for Pulisic. But the answer from Todd Bowley has always been that he doesn't want to loan him out to important teams, but maybe to find different kind of solutions. So at the moment, nothing else, nothing advanced. All righty. So let's uh, focus now on uh, my club, Fabrizio Romano. It's been a dreary start to the season, just like Manchester United, Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa. A lot of promise. Buba Kamara, of course, uh, one of the shining gems of the summer. But Diego Carlos is out for at least, uh, I would say, January, February. But, you know, results-wise, it hasn't been good. Crystal Palace, fantastic. A good win. Bournemouth loss. I mean, the list goes on, man. The Villa fans, Fab, are not happy. I'm not happy. Uh, but business continues to be done, I believe. Or at least the, that's the objective before the end of the window. So just straight away, settle everything, Fab. Ismaili Sar, the Watford winger, fantastic talent. Uh, what happened? 
at the moment it's over, it's off. Uh, it's, it's a crazy deal because it was agreed between Watford and Aston Villa, according to my information. It was done for 25 million euros plus three nedons. So everything was fine. There was also a sell-on close. Everything was agreed. Ismail Asar was ready to complete his move to, to, to Aston Villa. Also, big part, main part of personal terms were agreed. And then we know that sometimes in the negotiation is not just uh, it's not just the player or the clubs, and there are other factors. And so, according to my information, this deal collapsed on player side, not on club side. So Watford were ready to to agree and to sell the player, to let the player go. And as of now, there is no agreement between Aston Villa and full agreement on, on, on Ismail Asar's side. So it has collapsed. Uh, Aston Villa are not happy with what happened with the uh, with player side. And so I think they will focus on, on different players now. Uh, and I'm curious to see what Watford will do right now with, uh, with Ismail Asar because also Crystal Palace were interested in him. They are negotiating with Newcastle for João Pedro with a new bid on the table, 25 million pounds plus sedons. So Watford will be pretty busy, but also Aston Villa. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, obviously replacing Diego Carlos, at least from a loan perspective, remains a target. And, you know, plenty of us are asking for a number eight as well. But just to make sure that we understand here from your sources, from your information, this is Mela Sar situation broke down from the player perspective, yes. not the club perspective. Yes. The yes. player or, you know, his It was between the player and Aston Villa, not between Aston Villa and Watford. This is the problem right. from what I know. Right. So so I just wanted to make that clear because obviously a lot of Villa fans are thinking, oh, what's the club doing? No, this was already said. It was sorted. And then the player perhaps requested something that was just far beyond the reaches of what Aston Villa was prepared yes. to offer. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about Arsenal here, uh, Lauricio Romano, because they've been doing some great stuff on the pitch. Gabriel Jesus, a true success. Uh, but now I'm hearing some other things, of course, per David Ornstein and others. Uh, including your own reporting. Uh, Pedro Neto remains a massive target. Tielemans, you've been talking about him for a while as well. What's the latest with Arsenal as they look to continue to climb up this table? Because they're number one right now. Yes, they are doing fantastic. And let me say that I don't know where they will end up, but it's a joy to to watch Arsenal playing. It's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. You can see the group. You can see the atmosphere. You can see how happy they are together. So it's really a beautiful atmosphere around around Arsenal. They will sign other players. I think Mikel Arteta was pretty clear many, many times by saying that he's waiting for new for new signings. They are still short, he said. And so new winger has always been the priority. We know they wanted Rafinha. They submitted two proposals for Rafinha before he joined Barcelona. And now for Pedro Neto, it's true that he's the priority. He's a player super appreciated by Edu. Uh, same with Mikel Arteta. They consider him kind of perfect player for the idea of football they are having. It was already discussed internally. Another player that really appreciated is Moussa Diaby from Bayer Leverkusen, but at the moment he's not on the market. Bayer Leverkusen want to keep the player, want to discuss a new deal with him from what I'm told. And so this is why the main focus is on Pedro Neto. Let's see what happens with Wolves, because it's never easy to negotiate with Wolves, but it's also true that they already invested big money on Gedes, on Mateusz Nunez. They are looking for a new potential strategy. Striker. So maybe at some point after selling Gibbs White, they could also need to discuss for a, for a Pedro Neto situation. At the moment, the stance of Wolves is that they hope to keep the player and they are asking for important money. I think more than 50 million pounds for, uh, for Pedro Neto. Let's see what Arsenal will decide. But for sure, he's one of the players they're targeting. And for Yuli Tillemans, he's one of the priorities in the list of Arsenal since a long time. Uh, since May, they have always been in contact with people close to the player, but never submitted an official proposal. So maybe they're waiting for some more outgoing. We know that there is Maitland Niles, and it's important to understand what happens with Pepe, who is in negotiation with, uh, with Nice, and it's a possibility for Arsenal to complete some more departure before bringing in new players. But I think Arsenal will be pretty busy, but I really like the strategy. Let me say, I can see, I can see the strategy, I can see the idea, I can see the vision, and I think Edwin and Arteta together are doing a very good job in rebuilding Arsenal. I always say to May United fans, for example, remember where Arsenal were one year ago at this point, with people furious with the market, uh, with terrible beginning of the Premier League, and then look with the strategy, with the vision of the board, of the manager, how they they change the situation. Yeah, absolutely right. You can see the development. You can see the step-by-step -step process from Edu and Mikel Arteta. There were some tough moments last season, but they stuck together. And now, uh, at the very least, they're you know they're creating some great, great highlights here. And so we're going to stay in touch with that, of course, between Pedro Neto and Tillemans. Uh, let's talk about Barcelona here, Fabrizio Romano. And don't worry, everybody. We're asking... Uh, you know, we're answering all your questions, so don't worry. And we got some questions about Barcelona, specifically the search 
for a right back. Uh, obviously, that's been in the cards for a while. Before we get there, though, some updates here on Memphis Depay and his supposed move to Juventus. What's going on there? So the situation for Depay is particular <laughs> because the timing has been has been crazy because on Saturday there was a full agreement between Memphis Depay, his lawyers and Barcelona board on the termination of the contract. So everything was ready, everything was agreed for Memphis um, to, to leave Barcelona. And this is why Xavi was in press conference uh, before the game and he said, I'm not going to release uh, the players list today because maybe something could change tomorrow. They were expecting Memphis Depay to terminate the contract on Saturday and to join Juventus on Sunday. But what happened? That Juventus, in the discussions with Memphis Depay, asked for some time because they didn't sell Adrian Rabiot to Manchester United and it was in the plan last week for Juventus. It collapsed. And so now they are waiting for the green light from the ownership to sign an important player with an important salary like Memphis Depay. So it's now up to Juventus because between Memphis and Barcelona, the termination of the contract is ready. But of course, Memphis will accept only in case he will find an agreement with another club. And that club is Juventus. Tomorrow could be an important day for Juventus to decide if they will proceed for Memphis or not. So tomorrow, Wednesday, it will be decided. It's not something that will go till the deadline day. But Memphis could be available on a free. And it's, I think, a big opportunity also for other clubs in case Juventus will decide to leave this opportunity and to go for different players like Milik from Olympique Marseille, who is the plan B for Juventus with different salary and, of course, with different costs. So Memphis Depay's exit highly depends, obviously, on Juventus saying that, yeah, we're willing to accept to bring it in. So it's going to be a bit of an intricate tale. Forza Barca, which all right backs are Barca monitoring? Can we have some names? Uh, the right back position, a very important one for Xavi. Any new names or current names that continue to surface? Uh, two players that have been discussed internally. One is Thomas Meunier from Borussia Dortmund, but it's never easy to negotiate with German clubs at the end of the market. So uh, it's not a super easy one, but it's one of the players that Barcelona discussed. I'm told there is nothing for uh, for Diogo Dalot. There were many rumors on him, but he's a key player for Aiton Hag at Manchester United. And the player to watch is Juan Foyt, the Argentinian right back who can play also as a center back in a three back defense at Villarreal. He did very well. He's an Argentinian national team player. I think he's a very smart solution for Barcelona. It's not an easy negotiation with Villarreal, but the player could be attracted by this Barca opportunity. And so Foyt is the player they are, they are following. But let me say that the timing will not be fast. Barcelona need to sell players, need to resolve the situation with Depay, need to understand what will happen with Chelsea for Obama Young, and then they need to register Koundé. So the timing will not be fast. I feel that this right-back situation could go to the end of the week or maybe to the end of the market. Yeah, you mentioned Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang there, so let's like pivot a little bit to Chelsea. Chelsea, not a good result against Leeds United. BABA is asking about Maguire to Chelsea. True, we don't want him, question mark. I mean, you know, slow your roll, BABA. We don't even know if it's true yet. So let's set the Chelsea conversation here, uh, Fabrizio Romano. Straight away, first of all, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, what's going on there? Because obviously conversations were meant to be happening between both clubs. Yes, there are conversations. Uh, there was a bid from, from Chelsea, including Marcos Alonso, but Barcelona are not interested in including Marcos Alonso in this deal because of the Kunde situation. They want Marcos Alonso, but in a separated deal. If they include Marcos Alonso in this deal, they can sell Obama Young, sign Alonso, but not register in Kunde. It's, it's not enough. So this is why for, for Barcelona it's important to separate the deals, while Chelsea don't want to spend more than £15 million pounds on Obama Young because of the age of the player, because also the length of the contract. He wants an important contract at Chelsea. So at the moment, it's up to Barcelona if they want to change their position or up to Chelsea if they want to raise their bid. So this is the situation. But it's still ongoing the discussion for uh, for Piero Bamiyan and uh, and that's it and then for Chelsea I see Barak asking uh, is important to clarify about the center yeah, back there were a few questions here Fab our Chelsea yes. fans are getting crazy oh, here first of all Harry Maguire very quick is that yes, is that even the answer the answer I'm getting when I answer about Maguire is we want Wesley Fofana. So from Chelsea, the centre-back is, is Wesley. They want him. They want him. They think he's the perfect player and I think they will be back with a new bid this week. So I have nothing at the moment on Maguire because I think they are really focused on, on Fofana. Then yeah. let's see if they will miss out on that one. Maybe it could change. But at the moment, the, the focus is on the Leicester centre-back. 
Yeah, and Wesley Fofana reportedly wants Chelsea. Obviously, his idol is Didier Drogba, etc. He wants it. He yeah. wants Chelsea. He's desperate for Chelsea. He's obsessed with Chelsea move. He's waiting for Chelsea, and he's ready to have an agreement with Chelsea because personal terms are already agreed between his and Chelsea. Six-year deal, an important salary. So Fofana is just waiting for Chelsea to proceed. It's up to the club now. Very quickly, Wilfred Zaha, obviously, and a very important piece for Patrick Vieira and Crystal Palace. There's always been interest uh, for the attacker slash winger. Is Chelsea at all interested or anybody? Or is Crystal Palace saying basically, hands off? No, he's one of the players that Chelsea discussed with some intermediaries, but really Chelsea negotiated, I think, for 50, 60 players this summer. So they discussed with many players in the market. But at the moment, there is still no bid or anything, anything advanced. It was top priority for Roma before they had the chance to sign Paolo Dybala. So if Dybala maybe was not at Roma, now maybe for Zaha was the big opportunity to join Serie A. But because Mourinho is a big fan, but at the moment they signed Dybala, they have Dybala, Zaniolo and Abraham, so they are more than happy. All right, so we are here with Fabrizio Romano. Make sure to follow him on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, CBS Sports. We're answering your questions right now. So try and be a little bit creative. We want to hear from other clubs as well if you have a question. But we do have one about Newcastle here uh fab uh, newcastle got to be making moves no more than pedro give us some intel fab newcastle with a really uh great result against manchester city you gotta say 3-0 fantastic performance but uh are newcastle looking for more in this transfer window yes they're doing great uh, and when you do great uh, your your strategy is working this is the message from from newcastle and we have always been speaking high of newcastle on how they are acting on the market here on the on Kegolaso many times and i still think that they are doing very well they, for example they want a creative midfielder they submitted the proposals for madison from leicester leicester said no many times but they want that kind of player a creative midfielder with high quality a player who could be a game changer for newcastle but they will go for it only in case they find the right one. So this is the message from, from Newcastle. They are not wasting money on players they don't trust. So Madison has always been the priority, but Leicester, of course, want to want to keep him. For Pedro, is a really important day. Yeah? Today, tomorrow, there will be meetings, uh, direct contacts to resolve the situation. They had two bids turned down by Watford, but the third bid was submitted on Saturday night. It's for £25 million pounds plus a don'ts. And now it's a big opportunity for uh, for Newcastle to try to complete the deal. The player is keen on the move, and so it will be decided soon. But I think Pedro will be really interesting as smart signing. So creative midfielder, striker, and then let's see if there will be some more opportunity. Fabrizio Romano, let me ask you something. Obviously, uh, the Champions League draw is later this week. Some interesting clubs doing some businesses. Is there anything else going on outside of the Premier League that we should be keeping uh, our ears and eyes on perhaps uh you know even you know Serie A which by the way everybody you can watch exclusively on Paramount Plus is there anything going on outside of the Premier League that we should be really paying attention to yes in Serie A many things are moving uh because we mentioned Juventus with the pie or Arcadius Milik as, as plan B but Juventus also want to sign Leandro Paredes uh, and this is a direct link to Paris Saint-Germain they will also be I think busy in the next days they wanted Milan Skriniar from Inter as priority as center back but Inter uh, have decided he's untouchable he's no longer on the market they refused the bid for 50 million euros plus loans for Skriniar who is key player for Inter and so let's see who will be the new center back for Galtier at Paris Saint-Germain but they are still looking for a midfielder with Fabian Ruiz priority and for another striker uh, they wanted uh, we know to sign Skamaka but then he joined West Ham and let's see if they will find any other striker on the market at Paris Saint-Germain level. So I think PSG will be busy. Juventus will be busy with this Paredes situation to be clarified with PSG in the next weeks. Inter will sign a new centre-back. Akanji, Shaloba are two names they have in the list, but the easier option is Acerbi from Lazio. AC Milan want to sign a new centre-back and they are negotiating with Tottenham for Tanganga, who is an option on loan with buy option or obligation. So there are negotiations ongoing. Napoli did a fantastic window signing also Nombele, Raspadori, Simeon in the last few days, and they want Keylor Navas from Paris Saint Germain. So I feel a part of the Premier League, Paris will be the center of the market for the outgoings and for the new signings. Luis Campos will be pretty busy. Galtier is doing a top job uh, at the beginning of the season with, uh, with Paris Saint Germain. And so I think they will sign some more players, maybe two or three, depends on the opportunities, but also many outgoings to complete. Gana Gay, Keylor Navas, Leandro Paredes, and many other players who could be available on the market. So it's a good thing that Jonathan Johnson already went on vacation then for Peter Romano because he's going to be a, a busy yeah. man writing for CBS Sports, of course. A lot of action at Paris Saint-Germain with that tremendous victory against Lille 7-1. My 
Uh, goodness. Uh, I have some questions about Real Madrid here, Fab. I know the answer to this, I think, but it's, uh, Miguel is asking, is Real Madrid looking for a replacement midfielder? And there was another one about, are they going to be spending any of that Casemiro money there from Oscar? Uh, you know, Schumann is there, Camavinga's there, Valverde can do a job, but Fab, are Real Madrid planning at all to do anything before the end of the window? It depends on the opportunities. At the moment, it's a no. At the moment, they keep saying that they want to continue with the same team. But we also remember that one year ago it was a no, and then the Camavinga chance appeared on the market in the final days of the window, and they decided to invest on him. Real Madrid, it's about the strategy, always. It's like Liverpool, for example. They sign if they're convinced that there is a top player ready for Real Madrid level on the market. So at the moment, it's a no. But we still remember when they missed out on Kylian Mbappé, uh, there was a panic, like mentioning many players for Real Madrid, Lewandowski, Darwin Nunez. At the end, the only player they really wanted was Gabriel Jesus, uh, but it was impossible because of the passport, the, the European passport he doesn't have. And so this is why the deal didn't, didn't happen. But they decided not to move on any other player. They decided to wait and wait and wait. And this is what they're going to do. For example, a player they really love is Bruno Guimaraes from Newcastle, but he's absolutely untouchable. There is no possibility to negotiate for, Newcastle, for, uh, for Bruno Guimaraes with Newcastle this summer. So at the moment, they're really quite unhappy with the team they have. Let's see what happens in case they will have some opportunity in the final days of the win. They usually always do a 12-month project. I mean, the likes of somebody like Jude Bellingham, for example, who's not necessarily exactly. available this summer, but somebody that would be that a crazy, a crazy fight uh, for Bellingham. Amazing. I think it will be incredible. I think it will, it will remind of the Haaland fight we had this summer. In this summer, with for Haaland, <laughs> it was Bayern, uh, Real Madrid, Barcelona, and many clubs. I feel that for Bellingham, it will be that kind of fight with Premier League clubs, uh, with Spanish clubs, it would be crazy. Yeah, but that would be more for 2023, though, I think, right? It wouldn't yes, be. Yes, yes, yes. Right. He's taken for Borussia Dortmund. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely right. Um, all right, well, we're getting some Leeds United questions here. What a great win against Chelsea. Jesse Marsh, Leeds United States of America, Fabrizio Romano. Fantastic <laughs> stuff. Uh, the High Pigeons yes. ask, any Leeds news, Fab? Let's see what happens with Willy Nyonto, uh, because we already mentioned his name for Leeds, and they are following him, and they are still in contact with these agents to see if they have the opportunity to bring him to, to Leeds immediately. I think it's a possibility. There are negotiations. And so I think that Andrea Radrizzani and Victor Orta want to do something more in the market if they have a, if they have a talented opportunity for the attacking positions. This is the priority for, uh, for Leeds. So I would mention Nyonto because I think it would be a really smart signing. And then they have a very good team, as you mentioned. It was amazing with, uh, with Chelsea. Pure energy, I think. Fantastic energy around the team. Fantastic energy around the club. Very good job this summer by selling Calvin Phillips and Rafinha and replacing them with very important players. So I think they will complete the team with one more forward if they have a nice, talented opportunity like Willy Nyot. All right. So the last question here before we say goodbye to you, Fab, is uh, we started with a big game for Manchester United. It's a big game for Liverpool. They haven't one yet uh, they always usually start pretty slow their seasons and they've got a few injury concerns suspension concerns darwin nunez is out of course for this game high temp pss are liverpool are they going for ac milan player ben Acker? what do you think no i think no i think no i think that ben Acer and tonali both players because we also had rumors on sandro tonali for arsenal for liverpool but the answer I'm getting is that AC Milan want to keep both of them. They are key players for AC Milan. They are looking for new midfielders. So at the moment, there is no negotiation for, uh, for Ben Acer. That would be interesting to see him or Tonal in the Premier League, but it's not possible because they are key players for, for AC Milan and they need them. Uh, the final question is Vic Collis says, hey, let me, do you have two hell's phone number? I need to tell him something. Yeah, let me get him for you, Vic. One second. He, I don't have his If anybody is not talking to Thomas Tuchel, it's this guy right here. If anything, Fab has his number, but I, I don't know. Thomas Tuchel, he, the poor man has been dealing with so much for the last uh, year and a half, Fab. I think it's we need true. to give him a little bit of a break, right? It's true. It's true. I agree 100%. <laughs> But one person that never stops is Fabrizio Romano. Fab, before we say goodbye, anything that we haven't touched on that we should be looking at? I'm curious to see what happens with Eric Bailly deal because there are negotiations ongoing on player side with Olympique Marseille. There is an agreement between Manchester United and Marseille on a loan deal with buy obligation in case Marseille will reach Champions League football next season. But at the same point, there is no agreement between Eric Bailey and Marseille on the contract. So negotiations ongoing, and it could be an important one for May United because we know uh, that they need to complete some departures before bringing in some new players, for example, on the new right back, or maybe let's see what happens in, in other positions, but also a new important centre-back for uh, Olympic Marseille. They're trying to build an interesting squad for uh, Igor Tudor. 
Yeah, that would be a very interesting move indeed. Fabrizio Romano, always good to have you. Make sure to follow him on Twitter, at Fabrizio Romano, TikTok, Instagram, CBS Sports every single week. And uh, it's going to be very busy. I mean, it's always busy for you, Fab, but these last two weeks, I'm sure it's going to be a bit crazy. So make sure that you get plenty of rest and energy. Thank you so much for being part of the family, Fab. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you as always. And uh, see you soon in the next days on Kegel Lasso. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Make sure to follow Fab. Make sure to follow Kego Lasso Pod on Twitter, youtube.com forward slash Kego Lasso. Plenty more to come. We have a great recap of Manchester United against Liverpool tonight with Michael LaHood and James Bench. We'll have some more content later in the week, including weekend previews, et cetera, et cetera. Have a fantastic, fantastic Monday. Fab, by the way, comes back later in the week as well. So we got plenty more with Fab. Thank you so much. Have a great day. See you next time. Till then. Bye-bye.